All right, all right, all right, folks. Let's just get right into it. This is the Sony A9 image review or image comparison. And I uh, put the Sony A9's images against the uh, Nikon D750. And then I threw in the uh, A6500 in as well. Kind of like a battle of the 24 megapixel sensors. Um, it is rumored, I can't confirm or not, but the internet is saying, and I believe it's true that the um, Nikon sensor is made by Sony. So essentially they're all from the same company, although you will see that they perform differently. And I suppose that is because of course, um, Nikon's image processing is different from Sony's image processing. So you're gonna see a different color science in the reproduction of colors and as well as a difference in dynamic range in the cameras and a whole bunch of other stuff. But uh, yeah, so let's get right into it. Okay, so here, here we have a picture of the sky. Now this one was, I kind of messed up. I uh, took a picture of the Sony in JPEG and the Nikon was um, in RAW. So this is kind of an invalid test, but these are just basically straight out of camera shots. Um, let's go to develop. As you can see here, this is uh, the JPEG file. And um, this is the RAW file with the uh, with the uh, white balance and, and information there. Um, what I notice off of the bat is the Nikon image. And in general, the Nikon images have a more of a magenta tone. And the Sony images have more of a warmer well, not warmer, but a cooler tone, like a more of a blue. Their blues tend to shine in the uh, Sony's and in the Nikon. So this was kind of a, a mute test, but let's just zoom in for some uh, one-to-one -one action. Skies look blue. Not too much noise. This is ISO 100. Both cameras were at the same um, same mode. 35 millimeter lens, f4, one. 320th on the Sony, 1 320th on the Nikon, both ISO 100. The 35 millimeter, the 35 millimeter lens that I used on the Sony was the Zeiss 35 millimeter 1.4 at 1.4. So let's uh, check here. Sky looks good. Skies look good here, although a little bit on, on the magenta side, but let's take a look at the moon for reference. Yeah, they both look good. I would say that the moon on the Sony looks a tad bit sharper, just slightly. But overall, these images are pretty much the same. Um, I mean, aside from the color, I can't really see any real deal breaker between the images. Let's move on to two raw photos. Okay, okay so here, I took a picture of the sky on uh, both images. Now, what I did do here is I did adjust the white balance to try to match them up. So this is 5500, um, 5550 and 10 on the Sony, and the same 5550 10 on the. Sorry, this image is the Sony. This image is an icon. Both are 5550, uh, both plus 10 on magenta. There's no other settings changed, as you can see. Everything else I kept the same. Both 35 millimeter lenses, uh, both f4, both images are 1 250th of a second. So everything was the same. I would say the only difference, of course, the Sony was with the Zeiss 35 1.4 at f4, whereas with the Nikon, I had the Tamron 35 1.8 at f4. Um, but otherwise, these images are pretty similar. Uh, out of camera colors, if I look at it with my naked eye, in this situation, I kind of like the way the Sony looks more um, with the warm tones in there. But otherwise, again, now let's check this out ISO 100. Let's see what 
the dynamic range is about if we lift the shadows and see what happens if we lift the shadows. Okay. Let's go all the way to 100 just for fun's sake. I'm going to sync the images. I'm not going to apply any sharpening whatsoever. Just lift the shadows and sync them. Okay, so these are the shadows lifted on the Sony. These are the shadows lifted on the Nikon. Sony looks a bit brighter. Let's zoom in. Move this over. I'm amazed at how how much brighter the Sony seems to have lifted the uh, shadows. Greens look a little bit more vibrant here too. Yes, this looks a bit more HDR-ish. But otherwise, the sky, everything else looks the same. Interesting. Interesting, interesting. Let's go to the next image. We have the Sony up front and an icon behind. Let's compare them side by side. Not much of a difference. Uh, this is both 35 millimeter lenses here as well. Let's check the sharpness on this bad boy. So this is the Sony image. Uh, I believe the focus was right about here. And then here we are with the Nikon. Both images at ISO 160. Um, 35 again. Interesting enough, the Sony is at f2.5, the Nikon is at f2.8. I guess I messed up, or maybe I moved the button over slightly, or something like that. A 1 640th of a second on the Nikon, 1 1000 on the Sony. Now, what I will say is, um, when I was shooting with the cameras, the when I would put the exact same settings on both cameras, the Sony image would always come out a little bit brighter than the Nikon image. Um, I would suppose that that's due to how the cameras measure the ISO and the exposure weight ratings, maybe slightly differently. Because um, you know, I'll take I'll show you this image for example. Here's a portrait uh, straight out of the camera, 160, 35, 1.8, 1 1000. Exact same settings on the Nikon. ISO 160, 35 millimeter, 1.8, 1 1000. Um, as you can see, the Sony appears to be slightly brighter than the Nikon. Let's put them both together. Here is the Sony image. Here is the Nikon image. Sony's a little bit brighter. Both are the exact same settings. So I can't tell. I don't, I don't know why that is. It just it is what it is. And of course, there's the out of camera colors. Visually, at the moment, the Sony is a little more appealing to me out of camera in this situation than the Nikon is. This is a bit more magenta y. Um, the Sony looks more natural to my eye in this opinion, in this case. Let's move to another image. Okay, both of them side by side. Now, what I did do here, just as a disclosure, on the on the Nikon, geez, I'm tongue tied here. On the Nikon, again, like I told you, if I reset it, the Nikon is a bit darker than the Sony. Both settings are the same. These are both at 85 millimeter. This is the 85 1.4 G Master on the Sony at f 1.8. Um, ISO 100, 1 640th, um, ISO 100, 85, 1.8, uh, 1 800th of a second, so I kind of blew the exposure on that, it's a third of a stop darker, 
So I just fixed the exposure settings and I fixed the white balance to make it match. Because as out of camera, I typically use auto white balance and the Nikon auto white balance at 8100 um, Kelvin plus 10. Whereas the Sony was 7000 Kelvin plus 10. So um, let me undo. Okay, so here uh, both are at 7000 Kelvin plus 10. And then I bumped the exposure up just a little bit on the Nikon so it can match the Sony. But otherwise, I didn't change anything else. Both are 85 millimeter again. Both are at 1.8. Um, as you can see, this is the out of camera auto white balance color of the Sony. This is the auto white balance of the Sony. Sorry. This is the auto white balance of the Sony. This is the auto white balance of the Nikon. Nikon, Sony, Nikon, Sony. Again, both auto white balance, and um, I adjusted the Nikon to match the Sony, and still with the adjustments, this is what it looks like. A bit more on the magenta side, whereas the Sony is a bit more on the bluer, blue tone, cooler side, if that means something. I will say to my naked eye, the skin tones, here look a little bit more pleasing than they do on an icon in this particular case. Let's go to another image. Here's the Sony, uh, same settings, 1 640th, 85 at 1 6. And then this is the Nikon uh, at 1 8. So slightly different in aperture. Sony is a little bit brighter, although it is at 1.6, so that would attribute it to being a little bit brighter. Let's actually brighten up the Nikon to match. Let's go. Ahead. Oh, it's already brightened. I forgot I fixed it. There we go. Never mind. 7400, 7556. Okay, so now let's do a uh, dynamic range test. I took both of these shots with the purpose and intent of bringing it back up in post because I wanted to see what both cameras could do when you underexpose the image and bring it up and see how well the dynamic range would work with the shadows and whatnot. So um, let's make this happen. So I'm actually going to go all the way up to five stops according to Lightroom. This is ISO 100 and I'm going to apply the exact same settings to the Nikon. Right. Okay, so these are what both images look like. Um, let's actually try to fix the color on the Nikon to match the Sony. At least the white balance and see if that helps. So 5,000 plus 8. 5,000 plus 8. Still has a bit more of a magenta tone. So let's um, let's bring the magenta down. That looks a lot better. This is a bit warm, so let's bring the warmth down. Okay, that's better. Closer, not quite, but this is close enough. Okay, so now let's look at the dynamic range here. I, these both of these images were with the 35 millimeter lens. Um, at f4, 14,000 ISO 100. So this is the Sony. This is a Nikon. Exact same settings. As you can see, I, I pulled both of them up five stops. So this is the ISO equivalent of 3,200. This is about the ISO equivalent of 3,200 five stops from ISO 100. So. Let's see what these uh, shadows look like here. So this is the Sony. This is the Nikon. I will say uh, the Nikon appears to be quite a bit cleaner when you recover the shadows than the Sony does. 
Now, the reports online did say that the uh, Sony didn't have as great as dynamic range uh, in response or in, in comparison. It was a much faster processor and supposed to give you better low light performance, but the dynamic range wasn't as great on the Sony Center. And as you can see here, the Nikon, I pulled it up five stops and it's still actually fairly clean, decently clean. Um, whereas the Sony is starting to break up. You can see some color noise in here. Whereas in the Nikon, it's still pretty clean. Let's put them both side by side. Right in the walls here, you can see the, the image starts to break down a little bit. Nikon holds up pretty well. So yeah, that's impressive. The Nikon even from this view, you can see us pull this over. Even from this view, you can see that the Nikon image appears to be much cleaner than the Sony image. Let's look down here. Still fairly sharp, so that looks good. Here the Nikon is just as sharp and it's way cleaner, way cleaner file. Yeah, check out the blues and the grays. This is the Nikon. This is the Sony. Yeah, there's a clear winner here. So dynamic range tests, um, there's a clear winner. Okay, so now this one, this uh, this image, I decided to uh, put it up against the 6500. Okay, so now we have the Sony versus the Sony. Um, on the left, we have the A6500, and on the right, we have the Sony A9. Now let's look at the settings. 6500 with the uh, 50 millimeter 1.8 lens. The uh, Sony has the 85 millimeter um, at 1.8 lens. So uh, both are 80. Well, the Sony is the 85 millimeter 1.8, as you can see right here, and made it data. And the Sony again, <laughs> the Sony A6500 is the 50 at 1.8. Now, of course, you know um, with the ratio with the crop center, if you put a 50 millimeter lens, you're going to get about 75. Uh, millimeter equivalent in full frame in the 85 is 85 so that's going to be that but otherwise the uh, settings on the image this is 18 both are at 18 both are at ISO 100 um, the a9 is at 14,000 the uh, 6500 is at 132 hundred of a second not that that makes a difference besides brightness but um, if you want to do a full frame versus crop view this is what crop looks like this is what full frame otherwise both images look fairly clean they look really nice let's zoom in okay a little bit of a uh, color fringing there chromatic aberration I believe so this is the a6500 Look at the A9, much better, much sharper. Yeah, the full frame uh, sensor in this particular case with the lens performed a bit better than the crop sensor. Now, granted, this isn't as uh, sharp as the other Sony. I was gonna say Nikon, but they're both Sonys. Um, the 6500 isn't as sharp in this particular case with this lens. Um, than the Sony A9 is, but but this is sharp enough. With, with some post processing and some sharpening, you can make this image look fine. And you know, from a from this from this particular view, which is how you would typically view the image anyway, it looks fine. Once you start pixel peeping, is when you see the difference. Um, otherwise, the only other difference you can see, of course, is the typical full frame versus crop argument, where here's the crop sensor. Depth of field is not as shallow, 
and there's not as much compression. Of course, there's about a 10 millimeter difference, but still. As you can see, the, belt, the background melts quite a bit more at the 1.8 on the 85 than it does with the 50. So if you're wondering why people typically prefer full frame for portraits, this is why, because you can get much better, much more shallow depth of field uh, at any given focal length for the um, full frame camera than you can with the crop sensor. Now the other test here was a, a low noise, or sorry, a high noise, high ISO, geez. High ISO test. I guess you could ch say low noise to see how much noise that they have. But here we have the let's see, we have the A6500 at 6400 ISO, A9 at 6400 ISO. Both are at 2.8. We have the 35 millimeter on the A6500. And we have the 50 millimeter on the A9. Of course, as you can see, the A9 looks to be slightly cleaner than the A6500. Of course, full frame is always gonna give you better noise performance, given everything's equal. Both of these are 24 megapixel sensors. Let's zoom in. A6500, A9, A6500, a9. I would say though at ISO 6400, the A6500 doesn't look too bad. Like this isn't bad for 6400 ISO on a crop sensor camera, in my opinion. I haven't sharpened the image. I haven't done any post processing. So as you can see, everything is equivalent. 5200 on the uh, temperature plus 11 tenth. 49 plus 5. Let me see if I can get the colors to match. Let's see here, 5200. And then what is the tent? 11. So let's go to 11. See if they match up without changing anything else. Close, actually pretty close. Everything else is the same. They're both at a one two hundredth of a second. Both two point eight. Both sixty four hundred. Um, the focal lengths are different, but the the equivalency is the same. And again, of course, you can see depth of field. Uh, two point eight on crop versus two point eight on full frame. If you look back here, this is going to be much more in focus back here on the crop, whereas in the full frame, it's a little bit more shallow. Actually, let's go to the people and see. So this is full frame. And this is crop then you can see that they're a little bit more in focus. The lines are a little bit sharper on the crop sensor. Whereas on the full frame, things just kind of melt, melt away a little bit more. So you get a little bit more subject isolation on full frame. But otherwise, um, high ISO on both cameras, crop versus full frame, the uh, 6500 held up pretty well, I would say so in this particular case. Let's go back to the uh, Nikon versus Sony. Now these two images here, um, I just wanted to show you an example of, of um, the 50 millimeter and what the colors look like out of camera. Both of these are ISO 100. Both of these are 1 200th of a second. Both of these are at 1.8. The Nikon, which is this image here, the Nikon was with the Nikon 50mm 1.8 at f1.8. The Sony was with the Zeiss 55 1.8 at 1.8. So as you can see, out of camera, auto white balance. Honestly, I don't even know if it was auto white balance. Let me check. I 
Yeah, it was auto white balance. The Sony says 5,900 plus 9. Nikon said 81 plus 15. Let's change the Nikon to match the Sony to see how the colors look. Okay. So both white balances are the exact same. In this case, I like the way the Sony looks over the Nikon. Just, just off of face value. The reason I like the, uh, this looks a little more creamy, a little warmer. This looks a bit more magenta-y, but you know, we've been seeing that trend with the Nikon images so far anyway. So let's go to another image. On the left, we have the Nikon. On the right, we have the Sony. Both 55 millimeter or 50 millimeter lens. The Sony was the Zeiss 55. The Nikon was a 50 millimeter. Both 1.8 lenses. ISO 100 at 1 200th of a second. Nikon, Sony, Nikon, Sony. Let's zoom in and uh, check sharpness. This is this is nice and sharp. This is super sharp at f1.8. That Zeiss lens is so sharp, it's not even funny. Now the Nikon, the Nikon is sharp enough, but it's nowhere near as sharp um, as the Zeiss. Now, granted, I, I could uh, well, I, there's quite a price difference. Um, this is the Nikon. This is the Nikon 50 millimeter 1.8, which is like 200 bucks. Whereas the Zeiss is like, I think $600 or a thousand. Let me check that. Let me check my math on that. Yeah, the Zeiss, the Sony Zeiss 1.8 55 millimeter is a thousand dollars, $999. So yeah, for a thousand dollars, it uh, quite, quite very much outperformed the $200 Nikon 1.8 lens, but I will say that the Nikon does look good regardless. For 200 bucks. But yeah, that look at this. So, let's go to some high ISOs, right? So here we have 2500 Sorry, 25,600 ISO on the Sony and then we have 25,600 ISO on the Nikon 2.8 on both 35 millimeter on both let's see let's zoom in now this was my point of reference I knew I was going to take these images to compare them and so at 2,500 at 25,600 here we go with the Nikon, and then let's look at the Sony. I'd say at this, and 25,600 is pretty high. Like you typically, most people wouldn't shoot this high anyway. This is this is an extreme test, in my opinion. Like this is you're trying to shoot in complete darkness to be this high. I would say both of them are about even. I can't really put one above the other. To be honest with you. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not seeing much of a difference. The Sony appears to be a little bit darker, but that could just be the uh, third of a stop difference in the shutter speed. The Sony is at 1 25th of a second. The Nikon is at 1 100th. But, um, Let me see if there's a difference in the colors. Hmm, I can't really say. Let's zoom out. Let's put them side by side.
Okay, so when I look at it in this particular scenario, the Sony at this higher of a range, the greens are a little bit better. So I would say that the Sony is holding up pretty well with the colors at 25,600. Noise, I can't put one above the other. They're, they're kind of even, in my opinion, with noise. But I would say that the Sony, the Sony's tones are holding up quite well um, at this at this high of a range. So let's go down a little bit. Let's check twenty five or twelve thousand eight hundred. Again, both both images are at the same exact settings. Both twelve thousand eight hundred. Both are with thirty five millimeter lenses. Um, both are two point eight. Both one twenty fifth. But like I said, what I noticed was with the Sony, when I put the exact same settings on both cameras, the Sony images would always come out a little bit brighter than the Nikon image. Which like I said, leads me to believe that the Sony metering system um, meters things a little bit to the right, more of an overexposure. Or maybe the Nikon just uh, meters things a little bit darker. I'm not sure what what was what, but either way, let's let's check uh, 12,800. Let's zoom in the lights. My main man here in the middle. All right, my guy here in the middle. Noise wise, they're pretty even. Here's the Nikon image. Here's the Sony. Nikon, Sony. Nikon, Sony. Look at the whites. Look at all of this. Nikon, Sony. I can't I don't I don't uh, they both look about the same when it comes to noise let's zoom out again and check the color color wise uh, they're a little bit even like I said the Sony is a little bit brighter it had showed more exposure so you can see more of the green here and again we've noticed that the Nikon tends to have a more of a magenta tone so the greens are going to show up a little bit better on the Sony than they are going to be on the Nikon because of the way the tones are. Now, of course, with some post processing, you could probably fix them and color match them to match. And I actually did that. Um, I'll show you a video where I tried to match the colors. Here, let me pull that up for you. Okay, so this is an image uh, that I showed you earlier where I tried to match both images together. Um, color wise of course on the left we have the Sony and the right we have the Nikon and I tried to get the tones as close as possible um, so like if you're editing if you're trying to get the colors to match this is as close as I could get with my naked eye of course I could have I could have probably did a little bit better but um, this is the best I could do just trying to play with the sliders As you can see, I scroll down to the side and I had to change the um, shadows and, and everything on the Nikon. The purples, saturation. I kind of messed with all of that stuff. Of course, I made it a little bit brighter. I changed the white balance as well. And this was as close as I can get them. So it's 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 tough getting the images to match. It's possible, as you can see, to get them pretty close. But uh, straight out of camera, that's what it looks like straight out of camera with auto white balance. So that's the Nikon versus the Sony auto white balance straight out of camera versus when I tried to edit them. So hopefully you'll think I did a good job. 
So yeah, that's a look at the uh, images. Hopefully you learned something or got some insight to the uh, Sony versus Nikon. At least in the 24 megapixel realm. Again, like I said, the reason I decided to do this test is because both are 24 megapixel sensors. Um, both sensors perform very well and high ISO. As you can see when you compare the two images the Sony versus the Nikon again this is the Sony or sorry this is the Nikon this is the Sony both are pretty pretty well they both hold up pretty well with high ISO um, and then even with the uh, A6500 versus the A9 the A6500 holds up pretty well in the high ISO noise, noise test as well also interesting enough of course both being Sony sensors the a6500 colors match up a lot better and a lot closer to the a9 than the, if you shoot with a Nikon so these are both straight out of camera colors and Sony's um, processing is on point when it comes to matching its 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 um its brands but matching the Nikon with the Sony not quite the same So anyways, hopefully this test or this uh, image review gave you some insight into Nikon versus Sony, especially in the 20, again, in the 24 megapixel image sensor department. This is not about performance. This isn't about frames per second or autofocusing. This is just about pure image quality between the cameras. Got it? cool anyways you guys stay tuned for more videos in the future I'm gonna close out here and um, thank you for watching <laughs>